problem six. Let's read the problem first. In the circuit above, determine A, the current through the 10 volt battery, and B, the voltage across the 1 ohm resistor. Looking at our circuit, we have a 15 volt battery in this branch, a 10 volt battery in this branch, and a 3 volt battery in this branch, a 1.5 ohm resistor, a 0.5 ohm resistor, a 1 ohm resistor. The problem is to find the current through this 10 volt battery and the voltage drop across this 1 ohm resistor. Try to solve that problem now before watching its solution. Here is a circuit diagram of our problem. Let's apply Kirchhoff's first rule. We first identify the currents. Let's say in this upper branch, we have a current that we'll call I1 that's headed in that direction. In this middle branch, we have a current, let's call it I2, that's headed in that direction. And in the lower branch, let's say the current I3 headed in that direction. Then we apply our equation sum of the currents into a branch point. There's a branch point. Now all of these currents go into that branch point. This of course is not possible. At least one of these currents must be coming out. So we should expect in our answers that at least one of these currents will have a negative value. We write our equation. I1 plus I2 plus I3 is equal to the currents coming out. There aren't any coming out, so that's just equal to zero. In this problem, we are asked for the current through the 10 volt battery. That's the current we've identified as I2, so we want to solve for that. We also want to find the voltage drop across this 1 ohm resistor, which is going to involve the current I1. Let's move now to the second rule. First, we have to define some loops. Let's take this upper loop and trace around it in a clockwise direction. And then let's take this loop around the perimeter of the circuit and call that our second loop. And let's go around it in a counterclockwise direction. And we will apply our equation. First of all, to the outer loop, some of the EMFs. We go through the 15 volt battery from positive to negative terminal. By our rule then, that is a negative EMF, so I'm going to write minus 15 volts it is. Again, I'm going to leave the units off for the time being. We have another EMF in this loop. It's down here. We go through it from negative to positive. That makes it a positive value, so it's going to be plus 3. And if we add those together, we will get minus 12 for the sum of our EMFs. This is equal to the sum of the IR drops around that loop. When we go through this 1 ohm resistor, we go through it in the direction of I1. So by our rule, that's positive. So it's going to be 1 ohm times I1, or simply I1. And then this 1.5 ohm resistor that we go through, we go through opposite to the direction of I3. By our rule, that makes it negative. So this would read minus 1.5 times I3. All right, that's another equation. Now let's apply the second rule to this upper loop. When we go around this loop, we go through the 15 volt battery from negative to positive. The rule says then it's a plus 15 volts. And we go through this from negative to positive also, so we're going to have a plus 10 volts. So we're going to have 15 plus 10, or a total of plus 25 equal to the sum of the IR drops around this loop. One ohm resistor opposite to the direction of I1, therefore it's negative one ohm times I1, 
minus I1. And then this 0.5 ohm resistor we go through in the same direction as I2. So we would have plus 0.5 times I2. All right. <clears throat> Now we have three equations and three unknowns. We would like to eliminate one of these unknowns and get to the point where we have two equations and two unknowns. Well, in this problem, we're not asked anything that involves I3. A natural thing to maybe eliminate would be I3. So let's see if we can do that. Let's solve for I3 from our current equation and write that I3 is equal to then minus I1 minus I2. And we take that and substitute that into the I3 here, and then rewrite this equation. And I'll let you confirm that when you do this, you get that minus 12 is then equal to 2.5 I1 plus 1.5 I2. Now, if we examine these two equations, we find that we're down to two unknowns, the I1 and the I2. Let's try to eliminate one of these. We notice that in the second equation, we have a 2.5 I1 and a minus I1 in the first equation. If I multiply the top equation by 2.5, then I'll have a minus 2.5 I1 here, which can be canceled with the plus 2.5 I1 down here if I add the two equations together. So what we're going to do then, one of the possible things that we can do, there are others, is to multiply the top equation by 2.5. Remember, we multiply each term in the equation by 2.5, so we're going to have 62.5. When we multiply 2.5 times 25 is equal to minus 2.5 I1. And then 2.5 times 0.5 is 1.25 times I2. All right, now we have two terms that are sa the same except for their sign. We will take these two equations and add them together. On the left, we will get 50.5. And on the right, we get 0 for this term. And 1.25 and 1.5 gives us 2.75 times I2. We solve this for I2. And that's 50.5 divided by 2.75. If you carry out this calculation, you should find that you get for this 18.4. And the units are amperes. It is a positive value. Remember what that means. It means that the current is in the direction that we have assumed. So it is to the left in this diagram. That is the answer to part A because that same current flows through the 10 volt battery. For part B, we want to find the voltage drop across this 1 ohm resistor. Let's find I1 before we do that. If we take this value of I2 and plug it into either this equation or this equation and then solve either of these equations for I1, I'll let you do that and confirm that the value for I1 that you get is minus 15.8 amperes. All right, remember what that negative sign means. It means that the current I1 is opposite to the direction that we have indicated in our diagram. So it's actually going this way. And we now know the current 15.8 amps flowing through this 1 ohm resistor. So we can find the voltage drop across that resistor. The voltage drop 
across the 1 ohm resistor will be the current flowing through it, 15.8 amps multiplied by 1 ohm. Simple enough calculation gives us 15.8 volts. That then is the voltage drop across our 1 ohm resistor and that completes our problem. All right, that's the end of problem six and that is the end of the problems on this tape.